is something that you can take and and then use in your school. Twist it, adapt it, whatever you need to do. Uh, my biggest thing is when I'm in a session, just like Todd Whitaker's we just left, is if I can take away a little nugget of something that I can implement into my school, uh, then I'm happy. So hopefully something I shared today will give you a nugget or something to get you to think about uh, to do an activity in your um in your school and i'm looking for sharing my screen all right and hopefully can you guys see that all right randy says we're good so i want to talk about improving school culture and i want to go back to what uh, todd whitaker just shared it's not the culture of, of the teach. It's all about the leader. It's the leader that makes the difference. Uh, and this is a quote, I'm a huge John Gordon fan. If you've never read the Energy Bus or any of his other books, I strongly recommend it. But John Gordon says, great leaders create great cultures. Culture affects motivation. Motivation affects productivity and performance. It all starts with culture. And the most important thing a leader can do is create a culture of greatness. Uh, and we were able to do some of that at uh, Muehlenberg South Middle School when I was principal there. And I just wanna go through several of the strategies. I'm gonna break this down into three sections. So I'll have activities that we did with staff, activities with students, and then activities with our community. So first I'll just start with something that was very simple, uh, was the call doing good notes. And so you see the one that looks like a post-it note and that's all it was. And I did a little stamp and put that on there. Now I know people that will go out and they will give you, give out a, a card like this and that's it. And then you look around the school and you've got 30 teachers in your building and all 30 have the same note. So I always tried to make sure that I put a personal note with that. Um, something that they were doing, something that actually called to them about what they were doing good or just a praise for them. I started that with post-it notes. And then the second card you see there is after I was doing the post-it notes, another teacher ended up one year for Christmas giving me business cards that, that just like that one. And then on the back, I could leave the note for the teacher. And I also use these with students. So if I saw a student participating in class, uh, just having a great discussion with the classmate, I would drop off a note for them. And again, I would make it uh, personal for them. Next activity was staff. This is one, if you've ever heard of Stantall Steve Bowler, uh, we, we borrowed from him, it's called You've Been Ambushed. So when it was a teacher's birthday, what we would do is I had a group of five to six students that I selected and on that teacher's birthday, Shortly after the day began, we would bust into that room and we would just real fast saying happy birthday in an excited way, just getting them excited. And then we would leave us a tag on their door that says you've been birthday ambushed. And just a quick way to brighten their day. It kind of caught them off guard in the beginning, but they uh, but they came back later and said, wow, thanks for the birthday song. And it was just a way for kids to kind of give back to the staff and and I enjoyed that as much as anyone. Next is the thank you emails from central office. So our superintendent would ask us each week to send him a shout out for one of our staff members. Now his, his rules for this was don't just say they do a great job, but make it something specific that they did that week and then send him an email and then from that email, he would take that, he would forward it to that teacher and say, hey, been talking to Mr. Lyle, been talking to Miss Jones, whoever, and just want to thank you for what you do. You make a difference in our district. You make a difference in the lives of our kiddos. And this was powerful because what we found and what teachers would come back and, and reply back to the email is they would say, wow, that came at just the right time. And that's what you find so often with things like this. 
next. And because of you videos, and you've probably seen the videos that I think YouTube, there were several videos out there where students or staff were creating because of you videos for students. We, we reversed that and did because of videos for our staff from, from our students. So I wanna share just a couple of those. Um, I will give you just a, a caution. The video is, the volume is a little low, so you may wanna turn up your volume just a little. And then I'll give you a second before I come back on to turn your volume back down, because I think after you turn it up, my voice may uh, uh, blare out when we come back. So I'll give you a second, at least that's what it did yesterday in our test. So after the videos, I'll give you a second to turn your volume back down. And so those are just two videos um, of our students. And what I did is I took those videos and I would send it to the teacher and I would just simply say, because of you, thank you. And again, what we found out is they would say, I needed that so much today. This was the perfect day to get that. Next was our Rise and Shine Challenge Games. This, these, the Rise and Shine Challenge Games were a, um, they, they came from the COVID experience when we were all virtual at school, no students and just staff. And what we found is that staff were getting negative. And to be honest, I was beginning to get negative. You didn't have the students to interact with. It felt like we were on islands apart from each other. And so we created a way each morning to bring our staff together and safely during COVID times. But and then this this has continued since COVID has passed. But we would bring them together for different games. So we would play let's make a deal to where I would have three envelopes. And in one envelope, it may be you get to leave an hour early today. In another envelope, it may say all the staff gets to leave 30 minutes early today. And then in the third envelope, maybe an autographed picture of me or an autographed picture of our superintendent. Just something that was fun and, and it was, it helped me, it helped our staff to be able to laugh together again. And, and I'm big on being able to have fun with your staff, creating moments that, um, that you can laugh together and you get to know one another a little bit better. And that was so important for us during those COVID times. So that's where our Rise and Shine Challenge Games came from. Like I said, we played Let's Make a Deal. We played Press Your Luck. We played a high roller dice game, deal or no deal. We did a golden ticket scramble, just like uh, the chocolate, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, we played Card Sharks. We had reverse raffles. We had to name that song. We had to name that movie, name that jingle. And if you're interested in any of those, uh, my information will be on the end. And we've got some of those written up where I can kind of help explain how we did those games. Just to kind of give you an example of our name that song. And so I think, uh, let's see. We don't have a lot on here. So if you just want to, we'll take a minute and just kind of, I'll show you how this worked. So the way it worked with my staff is I, each one of them had a dry erase board and I would give them the first line of a song. And then they had to tell me the name of the song. And then they would hold up their board and then whoever got it got points. And then we had a winner in the end that would win uh, some type of gift. So for example, I'm gonna give you the first line of a song. And since normally I would do this in chat, so let's go ahead and do that in chat. 
Um, so when I give you this, if you know the name of the song, type the song in. So here's your first one. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. If you know the name of that song, type that in the chat. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. Yeah, Don't Stop Believing by Journey. Uh, so Brandy got that one. So let's do another one. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd worked for all my life. If tomorrow all the things were gone, I'd work for all my life. I'm proud to be American is close. You got the right song, not the right title yet. I'm proud to be American is the start of the chorus, I believe. So I'll give a Sherman credit there on that one. It is God bless the USA. There it is. Uh, Denise got that. So God bless the USA. I'll give you another one. She's got a smile that it seems to me reminds me of my childhood memories. Sweet child of mine. Sherman got that one. So congratulations. But we would do several songs like that. Uh, and then I would try to, you know, you, you try to hit the different age group of your people, but then I would throw in rolling in my 5.0 with my rag top down so my hair could blow. And then in there popping in Ice Ice Baby. And, and so just a way to have fun. You could list all the songs that you wanted. Again, we just did the first line of a song. We did that with movies. We had a line, a famous line from a movie that we would use, and they'd have to guess the movie. Uh, we did jingles from advertisements, and they had to guess the product. Uh, but again, just a quick way to have fun with our staff uh, in our Rise and Shine Challenge games. The next um, activity with staff is you've been mugged, you've been elfed. What I like the most about these two activities is the fact that myself and my assistant principal did not come up with this. We've been working on ways to improve our school culture, and we began seeing staff find ways to improve it as well. So you've been mugged. Basically, it was a, just a mug with a lot of some candy and goodies in it. And they'd leave it at the door of a teacher with a little sign on it that says you've been mugged. Your job was then to take that, fill the mug back up, give it to someone else and put you've been mugged on their door. And it just went around. Then at Christmas time, we had a staff member and we still to this day, don't know which teacher started these, but we had at Christmas time, you've been elfed and it was a little stocking with little goodies in it and the same procedure. It went around, you've been elfed, pass it along to somebody else. Again, just a quick way to have fun and uh, just celebrate your staff. This, this one is one of the most powerful tools that we had on creating better teachers and getting teachers out of their classroom and visiting other classrooms. We simply called it, what did you see? What did you like? So the way this worked is my assistant principal and I, we would both go with two other teachers who were on planning. And we would go and pick another teacher's classroom for them to watch. And it was only five to 10 minutes that we were in there. We did it once, we're in nine weeks. And so we did one the first nine weeks, one the second, one the third. So we were only using at the end 45 minutes of a teacher's planning time during the year. Goes back to what Todd Whitaker said earlier, your best people, they loved it because now they have an opportunity to get into other classrooms and see what other people are doing and steal their ideas to use in their classroom. Maybe not do it exactly the same way, but adapt it to their teaching. When I first started this, my math teachers went to math teacher classrooms. Science went to science, social studies, social studies. Then after year one, then my math teachers went to science classrooms. 
My math teachers went to social studies. Math teachers went to PE class or art class because good teaching, great teaching is great teaching. Doesn't matter what content it is. And so they were able to see other people. Now, what I feel is most important with this, I can encourage teachers to go visit other classrooms, but if I don't schedule it, it doesn't happen because they don't want to look like the one that goes out there and says, oh, well, look at them. They're trying to do what Mr. Lyle said. But if I schedule it, then they know they're going. They also know they're going to go with me and my assistant principal. Again, we were in there five to 10 minutes, and then we spent five minutes reflecting on that classroom afterwards. We may stop by their classroom on the way back out. We may come to my office. And then we would jot down what we saw and what we liked. And then we would send an email back to the teacher we visited and said, hey, these were the great things that we saw. Thank you for being a great teacher. And um, just really like that activity. Uh, again, my best teachers loved it. I had teachers that did not like it because you were taking 15 minutes of their planning and when they weren't planning anyway, to be honest. Uh, but our great teachers loved that an opportunity to be in the classroom and have those conversations about the great things happening in your school. Next, at random times throughout the school year, I would have coupons that would be made. And uh, sometimes I would go into the, the teacher's lounge and stick a coupon up underneath the chair. And then I would go in and if somebody's sitting in that chair, then they win. Some of the coupons were give me 10 where they could turn that coupon into me. And if they needed a 10 minute break from their class, then I would go cover their class for 10 minutes just to give them a break. Um, another coupon was hit the snooze. On that one, if it was a day that they're like, you know, it would be great if you could take the first 15 minutes of my class in the morning and I would, I would take their 15 minutes. I had a leave early coupon. Again, that's me or my assistant covering their class. Uh, this, the next one was probably the most, uh, the favorite of all of them, no bus duty. Uh, you had your no bus duty coupon that you could earn. And again, on these coupons, it was me that was covering their time. Uh, not, not another teacher, but it was me. And that time gave me time to interact with students on a more personal, smaller group level within a classroom. And then the last coupon was a room service coupon to where they turn that in, tell me their favorite drink and uh, favorite candy bar or whatever, and we would bring that by uh, just for room service. Next activity with staff was our student connections activity. You may have seen this. Um, our director of special education brought this to me and I said, hey, this sounds like something we wanna try. So basically, in the student connection activity, we took every student in the school and we had their name on a post-it note and we placed it on a board around a room where no kids were located and they couldn't go into this room. Then I had the teachers go around and I had them initial on students' cards, the students that they felt they had a positive relationship with. Then that allowed us, if I'm a teacher and I'm having trouble with the student, I can go to this room, find that student's card and say, okay, this teacher has a good relationship with them. I need to talk with that teacher. How, how are you having success and can you help me with this student? Now, the first year I only had teachers give me the positives, which worked out great. But then I thought we're only getting one view and that's the teacher's view. I wondered what, what would students say? Who would students say they have a positive, which adult in the building do they have a positive relationship with? So the second year, and I did this just at lunchtime, I talked with the students and I said, I want you to write your name on a piece of paper and I want you to tell me the adults in the building that you have a positive relationship with. Then I took those lists and I went to this room and I put their, the teacher's initial in a different color 
if the student said that they had a positive relationship. Then I brought the teachers back in and they loved seeing which students said they had a positive relationship. Some of them matched up with what they said, but the power came to when they didn't know that a student felt like they had a positive relationship with and a student listed them as a contact if they needed something, if something was going on. Something else we found from this activity, and this is sad to say, but it's just being real. We had some student uh, post-its that had no names on it other than the kid's name. So we didn't have a teacher that said, I have a positive relationship. And then we had a student that said they didn't have a positive relationship with anyone in the school. Now, as sad as that was, that allowed us to target those kiddos. And so, and now we didn't go out and target them and, and just, we kind of did a silent mentor to where we knew that that was a kiddo that said they didn't have anyone. So we made it a point to find that kiddo and just ask them how their day was. How'd your weekend go? I love your shoes. Great. I love your hair today. Things like that to try to build that relationship. We found in year three of doing this, the number of kiddos that didn't have names, teacher names, was a lot less than what we started with. Uh, and that was through intention of, um, of just targeting those students and making sure that we were building positive relationships. So I loved our student connections activity. And this, I think it was the second or third year, all of our schools in the district did this activity. Uh, just a great one to do. Next with our staff, we have our voluntary book studies and they are exactly what it says, voluntary book studies, not mandatory. We did, we did these every Friday morning, about 35 minutes before school starts. And you can see from the pictures, the number of staff that would come just and, you know, we talked about the book. We did the energy bus, the carpenter uh, training camp, John Gordon books. We, uh, we did some Rod Oson books, some different books. And yet we talk about the books, but the most important thing is the fellowship that we do while we're there. And we learn more about each other because in the midst of talking about the books, we would play different games just to get, again, it goes back to the Rise and Shine Challenge games, get people laughing together, and having fun together and learning more about each other, which only builds your culture, which builds your family inside your school. One of the activities we did inside of the uh, book studies, and, and this is probably a terrible name, you can probably come up with a better name than what we did, but we called it Pass the Positives. And so you see the example, we would take a card and we would put, like this one is, I've got my name in the middle. Then we would roll a dice. And if it rolled one, you'd pass it one to the right. If it rolled a three, you'd pass it one, three to the left. And six, six to the right. And each time that card was passed, a different staff member had to write something positive about that individual. And, and that would continue. And people would say, well, what if I got it twice? Then write two things that are positive about that individual. And I still have mine in my office here. And at, after we did this activity, we would find these posted inside teachers' classrooms to where if they're having a bad day, what a great thing to look at and remember the positive things that your colleagues were sharing about you. And, and so far, if you think about the things that we've talked about so far, what do they cost? Nothing. There's not a cost to these. It's just a little bit of focus and a little bit of time to plan these out. Next we have is our staff spotlight. So once, once a month, we would have our staff spotlight. I would randomly draw a teacher's name. You could have teachers nominate people for this. We just chose to do random. We did a certified and classified. Here's an example. What I would do, is for that month, and this example, I would say, Miss Tammy Shutt, she is our uh, staff spotlight for this month. Please send me positive comments about Miss Shutt. And teachers would email me, I would compile those, and then I would have a, uh, just a Word doc that I would keep that in. And I would, after it was all over, I would print that and give it to the teacher so she could see or he could see what their colleagues said. 
Then I would create a quick Wordle and, and print out two or three copies of that so the teacher could have it. Again, we found these in the teacher's classrooms years after uh, they were a staff spotlight member. We also have our staff uh, shout out board. This is located in the around the front office. And it's simply what it is. You can grab a post-it note. And if there's a staff member that you want to give a shout out to, you write that, or slap up the post-it note. Staff could do this. Students could do this. Parents could do this. Visitors, whoever we had, we had this close enough to the front that anyone could post a post-it note or a shout out for a staff member. And we love to eat. Uh, so we had as many staff cookouts as we could have. Um, down in the bottom left-hand picture is in the middle is my assistant principal, uh, Mr. Doug Lloyd. And he had his brother and his dad come one day and help grill out for us. Uh, so we just had to try to find those opportunities. Again, it's getting to know each other and building that family atmosphere. We have our safety advice for education. If any of you are KASA members, you may have seen this come through um, the, the, uh, the emails with that. But our school resource officer, Wes Miller, he writes a safety advice for education email for our staff. And in that, he will give different pieces of advice. Maybe it's about locked doors and the importance of that. Maybe it's about visitors coming to the school, what you need to make sure of. Maybe it's about the importance of taking care of your school keys to your classroom and to the school. Sometimes it was just about the importance of getting a receipt at a gas station when you get gas. But it was a quick way to send out some important information to our staff and about safety and things they can do in the classroom and in the school. Then one of my favorites and which quickly became one of the teacher's favorite is we had the end of the year awards. Uh, some people called these the uh, mess up awards or do something goofy awards. But this was a way and this was the very last thing I did at the end of every school year. On closing day, this was the last thing. One year, we are having to wait a day and the teacher thought we'd forgot. And the teacher said, what about our end of the year awards? We need those. And so they were just goofy things that people did throughout the school year. And people would turn them in and say, hey, this needs to be an end of the year award. So just a couple of examples. One was our thumbs up award. Uh, that is one of our teachers, Mr. Victor Knopfsinger. And he, there he is in the nurse's office. Well, he and his team had went to the nurse's office to get their EpiPen training. Well, Nolfsanger is a goofball and he likes to be funny. So he picks up an EpiPen and he jams it in his thumb, says, I know how to use this. He thought he had picked up the trainer. He actually picked up a real EpiPen, stuck it in his thumb, his blood pressure skyrockets. We, he was okay, so we were able to laugh about it in the end. Um, so we gave him the thumbs up award. Another teacher uh, got the recipe of the year award. I'd mentioned our shout out board and this post-it note was displayed, was displayed for this teacher. And it said, Miss Shutt, helping make meth easier. Now that she was a math teacher. So I believe that's supposed to be an A, but when we saw this, we made sure we pulled this down and saved this for an end of the year award. Uh, Miss Shutt got the recipe of the year award by helping make meth easier. We are in Muhlenberg County, so uh, hopefully she didn't teach that. Uh, she did teach math. But just, again, having fun, uh, laughing with your staff. This was something that we, we, we did the last couple of years, and this is my first year, as I mentioned earlier, at Central Office. So we did this this year uh, at Central Office. It's our Christmas song bracket challenge. And so what I did is I had uh, teachers, or I'm sorry, here at the board, I had everyone here give me the name of their favorite Christmas song. Now, they had to do it quick because if somebody else had picked their song, they had to pick a second. And then we just created a bracket for that. 
And so here you see our Christmas song bracket challenge. What I had to tell the people up front in order for them to participate, you do not have to sing. Because if they thought they had to sing, they said they're out. So all they had to do was give me the name of their favorite song. And then what we did is create a Google form. So there you see the first match was Deck the Halls versus I'll Be Home, I'll Be Home with Bells On. And so we sent out a Google form. Which one of these is your favorite song? And then everyone in the building would vote. And whichever song had the most votes moved to the next round. And what we found is we had some staff members going up down the hallway campaigning for their song, singing their song aloud. This is the best song ever. Some would post like White Christmas, one of them. We had White Christmas signs everywhere in the building, teachers campaigning for their song. And then on the last day before Christmas break, we announced the winner uh, for our Christmas song bracket challenge this year. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer did take home the title. Uh, so, again, just uh, an activity there to have fun with staff. Those are the activities that we did with staff. Um, hopefully there's something there that you saw that uh, you might can take and adapt and use in your classroom. Toward the end, if you've got questions, uh, be free, I'll be uh, glad to take those and answer any. Something I didn't mention early on is if there's something that I, an activity I share that you, that you like, you know, give me a, an exclamation point in the chat. Uh, if it's something that just rock, you know, rocks, then just put uh, rocks or boom or something that's just a, uh, something that just uh, piques your interest. Uh, just give me some feedback on those. So next we're moving to our activities with students. So this one is we start every day with our joke of the day. And again, this volume may be a little low, so you may want this is probably going to brighten the rest of your day. Uh, nothing will compare to this. Today's joke of the day. What do you call a key that cannot open a door? A turkey. Now, you know that that is funny. You know, all the staff here at South Middle, they keep telling me to stop telling Thanksgiving jokes. But you know what I told them? I said, I can't stop cold turkey. Have a great and happy Thanksgiving. Your day will not be the same after that. Uh, but we did the joke of the day. Now, I was at a middle school. So, and, and my daughter, she would tell me, she'd say, Dad, nobody laughs at your jokes. And, and I said, that's okay. They're bad dad jokes. Uh, but you would find later, uh, that if it was a day that I wasn't there, they, we missed the joke of the day. Uh, so they, uh, they, middle school kids don't want to act like they like something. Um, and probably some of them, I don't blame them for not liking. Uh, but that's our joke of the day. Next, we had our birthday buttons. This was an idea that we came up with after uh, another principal in the district. He had been to Disney. And he, when he was at Disney, it was his wife's birthday. And so they gave his wife a birthday button to put on her shirt. And everywhere she went, the... People, the, the staff at Disney World would see that button and they would say, happy birthday, Jennifer. Happy birthday, Jennifer. And so we thought we could do that in our school. And so what we did, and this is one that did cost a little money. We had to buy a button making machine. And I had a custodian who was very craftsy. And she said, I would love to make these. So that became her job. And um, so we would have these buttons on, on a kid's birthday. We would call them down to the office. Here's your button. And then they would put it on their shirt if they wanted to. They didn't have to, but if they wanted to. And then my staff knew that if they saw a kid with that button, they said, happy birthday. And we made sure to put the kids' names on the button so then they could call that kid by name. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Brian. Happy birthday, whoever. And just so the kids knew that, hey, somebody knew it was their birthday. Now, again, it was middle school. So these kids sometimes would stick it in their pocket but they kept their buttons. We would find them later, later in their locker on some of our other uh, activity I'm getting ready to share with you. Next is our wow lockers. The wow lockers uh, is another Stan Tall Steve Bowler idea that one thing, and I don't know, maybe it's in high school too, maybe elementary in their cubbies, but 
middle school kids don't always keep their lockers very neat. And you go down the hallway and you've got paper coming out of the hallway uh, from their stuff. It's all, it's just nasty down through there. So we began our wow lockers. And these were, what we would do is we would randomly go through the hallway. We don't have locks on our lockers and we would just open them. And if it was neat and organized, we slapped a wow locker sticker inside that locker and said, come see us at lunch. And then if they got that wow locker sticker, they could come see us at lunch and we would give them um, some type of prize that, that, that they could get. Maybe it was set in a booth with friends, something like that. But we began seeing our lockers neater because they wanted that wow locker. They wanted the prize uh, that went along with it. Next, uh, we last year was, was my last year as principal and we had moved into a new building. Before, we had never had steps in our building. We were all one level. But we moved to the old, what used to be our 910 center and it had a first and second floor. So we ended up with steps and I, the steps were just blah. I knew they needed something. I wasn't for sure what it was they needed, but then I got an idea with our truth stairs. And this is the picture that we ended up doing. So on your left, and the idea came from Matthew West's song, Let the Truth Be Told. And in his song, it says, lie number one, you're supposed to have it all together. Lie number two, everybody's life is perfect except yours. Then we came up with the rest of the lies. Lie number three, you're not enough. Lie number four, you're not worthy. Lie number five, no one cares about you. Lie number six, you're not special. Don't believe the lies, rise above them, choose to move forward. And then the door right in front of them said, let the truth be told. Then as they turned the steps and went up to the next floor, then they saw the affirmations. You are special. You are beautiful. You are amazing. You are brilliant. You matter. And that's the truth. My hope is that this just brightens some kids day. Um, I have no proof that it did, uh, but it even helped our adults just reading these and, and just having those affirmations that, you know what, all those other things you're hearing, they are lies. You are special. You are wonderful. And, um, you know, there was no way they could avoid these. So they were on the steps, ended up turning out uh, better than we anticipated and very proud of those. Also our activities with students. We have anytime we can reward students, we try to do that. So we do map testing in our district or did, we've actually just recently switched to iReady, but we had map testing rewards, we had behavior rewards. And when those students would come, Maybe we're playing beach volleyball. Maybe we're playing tug of war. Maybe we're playing a cornhole tournament. The key to these map rewards and behavior rewards, when we did them, people were not able to pick their teams. We lined students up and we numbered them off so that they had to work with students that they normally don't work with. It was, it was always the same grade level, but is it maybe, maybe a student they'd never talked to before. And so they had to, learn collaboration, teamwork, and build relationships with other people. Also in those, we played the survivor games uh, to where we had different activities. You had, you know, the time, whichever team finished it first uh, was the team to win. Uh, so those were our map and behavior awards. Something else we did is I found it very important to meet with students about their K prep scores, their KSA scores, so that they could set goals. Now, the worksheet I've got here, it still says K prep. This is an old one. But so we would look at what their reading score was the previous year. And then I would talk with the students and I would say, okay, let's set a goal for this year. Some of them would set a goal of 20 points improvement. And then I would have to back them off of that and say, hey, let's, let's make a realistic goal. Let's make small increments and just grow over time. Then they would set the goal for that year and I would let them know. Next year, when your scores come back, we're gonna see how close you got to your scores and set a new goal. So they knew that we, not was it just a test they were taking, check it off and be done, but they knew someone was gonna actually sit down with them and look at their scores. So the way we did it, 
myself, my assistant principal, and my guidance counselor took all the students in our building, and we uh, we had we separated them into three groups. Each one of us had a group, and if I had a group of sixth graders, I stayed with that group their sixth, seventh, and eighth grade years uh, before they went to the high school. Next activity, uh, we have a big dodgeball tournament right before Christmas break. And this is an opportunity, the kids do get to pick their teams, but there's a $30 entry fee and they can do $5 per kid, whatever they wanna do, but it's a six person team. But a lot of times what we did is we had sponsorships. Our teacher would sponsor teams. And then the kids had to pay like $2 to come. Now it was Christmas time. So any kid that couldn't afford it, Santa usually came through to take care of it. The money raised one year went to our Humane Society. Other years it went to our Extreme School Makeover, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. But it was the money, what we tried to let them know, the money that's coming from this, yes, it's a day for you to have a lot of fun. But the money that comes from it goes somewhere else to help someone else. Um, so in this dodgeball tournament, we ramped it up. It was a full day activity where the very first part of the day, they would all come in with their uh, walk up music and we would have the national anthem to kick off the day and just have a good day with that. You can see here, kids began to have their own shirts. Uh, that was not a requirement. Some just ended up starting to do that. A lot of times our teachers would be the ones to end up getting them their shirts. There's some more pictures from our dodgeball tournament. Another activity with students, we call it lunch ball. And we were very strategic with our schedule to make sure that during lunchtime, our gym didn't have class. So PE didn't have class during our lunchtime. It worked out for us. So we instilled lunch ball. In middle school, we don't have recess. So this was basically a glorified recess for middle schoolers. And what we would do at lunch ball, kids would come to lunch and then about 15 minutes into lunch, those that were finished could go to the gym with my assistant principal and they would play basketball. They would play the South middle shootout. They would play dodgeball. They may play beach volleyball, just another way to get at some of that energy that they have out again, a recess for kiddos. Uh, we called that uh, lunch ball with our schedule. I mentioned this next one just a second ago. That was our extreme school makeover. The money that we raised from our dodgeball tournament went to our extreme school makeover. So the very first year we did this, we just focused on our school campus. What things in our on our campus needed some attention? So you see one picture there of a memorial garden that we had. It had been grown up with weeds. We had a group of students and a teacher take that project and make it look better, and, and they did. We had another group that was painting the railings outside of our football field and making that look better. We had a group take on the go post and, and paint those. You can see the before and after pictures. They, they really enjoyed taking part in giving back to our campus and they felt like they had some ownership in this. So we, we really loved our extreme school makeover. Here's some other pictures. You see them taking care of some weeds taking care of a staining a deck out back. And um, what we would do is we would have teachers sign up for what activity or what project they wanted to take on. And then they selected a group of 10 to 15 kids and they went about and did the project. Uh, so a great day for our kids, a great day to be able to show them the importance of giving back to their school. Year one was all about our campus. Year two, we branched out into our community. So year two, we went to the Humane Society. We had a teacher take a group of kids there, help the Humane Society. We sent a group to the nursing home to help around the nursing home. We sent a group to the Opportunity Center, which is a place in our district that employs um, people with physical disabilities. We had a group go to the central office and take care of some landscape there. So now not only were we taking care of our campus, but we now we were really able to go out and make an impact in our community. And the response that we received from that was great. People saw our kids 
And, and again, middle school kids typically can get a bad rap about how they are, uh, but this showed, hey, they are willing to give back. They are willing to help others. So that was our extreme school makeover. Also at the end of the year, we try to have creating and interesting assemblies for our students. A lot of times we'll do this in the afternoons of testing, not for who does well, just for, hey, thanks for, thanks for doing your best. Uh, we didn't have any qualifications to go to this. It's just an opportunity to see something different. We, uh, we had a ventriloquist come and uh, Taylor Mason, I don't know if you're familiar with him, Taylor Mason does Disney cruises and some of those things, but he would come. Um, students had never seen a ventriloquist in person. We would bring the Wolf Brothers from Louisville. They would come in and, and play songs for us. We had uh, University of Kentucky basketball players uh, stop by and talk with our students. We had repercussion. Repercussion is kind of the bucket drumming that you see. They came and, and did a, a show. We had our BMX stunt show. Uh, the middle picture there, you see me being jumped over uh, by a BMX bike. We had Parker Hastings. He is a national thumb picker. Uh, thumb picking is big in Muhlenberg County, so we wanted to make sure students knew what that was. That's a big part of our, our history in Muhlenberg County. We had a group of basketball players called the Flight Squad. They would come. We had a magician come. We had an animal show come. All those type of things just to give them something that maybe they don't typically see and a chance to have fun at the end of a long day. Another activity with students uh, is a book frenzy. So we have our spring and our, our fall and our spring book frenzies. And this is an opportunity that teachers select a book from the library and then the students can sign up for which book they wanna read with the staff member. So they all read it prior to the day of the book frenzy. And then on that day after school, they come together with that staff member. They discuss the book, uh, that we have some food for them. We have prizes. But what, what was impressive to me, and you kind of see an example here, is staff members not only read the book with students, but they found an activity that went along with the book. And so now kids are able to sit down with the teacher outside of school hours and really get to know that teacher. And the teacher really gets to know those students. And these aren't always students that they have in class. It's just the ones that sign up for their book. Uh, so we, we enjoyed this, our fall and spring book frenzies. Uh, we still do those. So that, that's all of our activities with students. So I wanna transition now to our activities with the community. Uh, Randy, I think we've got about 10 minutes or so, so we should be good. So and first, activity with the, the community. End, so you have you have plenty of time. Okay. This one is one that has probably helped us the most as far as how our community views our school. And I'm just going to be real honest with you. I taught at at our at South Middle for nine years before becoming a principal. Our school was not always looked at as a place with good culture. There were times that even as a first or second year teacher, people would hear that I worked at South Middle and they say, oh yeah, I've heard about that place. Is it as bad as they stay? This, this piece right here was one thing that now we, we have been able to shift that to now people say, oh, you work at South Middle. I've heard of that place. Is it as good as they say? So we've been able to go from one end all the way to the other. And one big piece of that is this weekly great news successes email. What I would do is each week I would have teachers send me great things or successes that happened in their classroom or in the school. And I didn't just limit it to teachers. Students could send me these. I had parents send me these. Community members that would come visit would send me some great news. And then every Monday morning, I would send this email out to as many people as I could. I would send it to our staff. I would send it to central office. I would send it, I sent it to the commissioner of education. Don't know that he read it, but he received it. I sent it to the governor. Don't know if he read it, but he received it. Just to make sure that people saw the great things that were happening. And what it did within our building 
was it got people focusing on the positives that were happening, not the negatives. You know, again, we go back to what Todd Whitaker said. The negative people are out there sharing the negative stories. They're telling you all the bad things that are happening, how rotten of a day it is. But this Monday morning email focused everyone back on the positives. You know what? There are great things happening in our building. Our kids are doing great things. Our teachers are doing great things. And through this email, we did end up having a Kentucky Board of Education member come. They had received this email because I went and found their email addresses and made sure they were on the distribution list. And they came and visited us to see the great things that were happening. This really shifted the focus of our school, the perception of our school in our community to be in a positive place and not a negative place. Uh, so really believe in this. And we had a lot of good things come from it. Another activity with the community is we had our Thank You Thursdays. On our Thank You Thursdays, we literally rolled out the red carpet for these visitors. And I say literally, we bought a red carpet and that was about 15 foot long. We rolled it so we're out. So as soon as they come in the building, they had to walk across it. We had a backdrop. As soon as they come in, kind of like you're coming into a big uh, showing for a new movie. We bought the red ropes like you would see at a, a grand opening or something. And these people walked through that. So what we would do in September, we had our first responders would come. We invited all of our, uh, in the, when we first started doing this, we just did police and then firefighters at a different month. We ended up changing that to just first responders. And so we would have state troopers, local law enforcement, volunteer firemen. Um, we would have, we also had the Kentucky Center for Safe Schools. Uh, ben Wilcox came and joined us. And so we would have those in September. In October, our Thank You Thursday was reserved to our bus drivers that drove for our school. We would bring them in at lunch and we would provide them lunch. Uh, we did not do one in November, December, just because that's when our lunchroom staff was creating Christmas meal, Thanksgiving meal. So we gave them a, a, a time off. But then in January, we picked back up. We had, that's a board appreciation month. So we had our board members and our central office staff come. In February, we had our maintenance and our mowing crew uh, be recognized during our Thank You Thursday. In March, we invited our business leaders and our community leaders within our district and our state. And then in April, probably, I hate to say a favorite, but it probably was, in April, we had any staff member who had ever retired from South Middle come back. And that was our Thank You Thursday. That was powerful because one, it was almost like a family reunion. People that hadn't seen each other in years coming back. And South Middle dated back to 1990. So anybody that had retired since 1990 came back. We were able to recognize those individuals. So many times when they retire, they feel like they're forgotten. And so we were able to bring them back, celebrate them. And then on that April Thank You Thursday with our retired staff, we knew that we had lost people that had passed away. So we made sure that we wanted to recognize those individuals as well. So during that Thursday, Thank You Thursday in April, we made sure that we had a forever MS MS son, a former South, forever South Middle School son, and on that board recognized all those individuals that had passed, but uh, they were not forgotten. And I think that's important for our people that are still living to know, hey, when I'm gone, I'm not going to be forgotten. And two, it's important for those families to know that we still appreciate the work that those folk did when they were with us. So those are our Thank You Thursdays. Other activities we have with our community, we have our mother-daughter nights. Our mother-daughter nights, uh, we would have, it's actually our guidance counselor's husband, uh, he would do some woodwork, but he would have this these wooden cutouts of either mason jars like you see here, or pumpkins, or hearts, Christmas ornaments, Easter eggs, depending on if it was the fall mother-daughter night, or the spring mother-daughter night. And then when these mothers and daughters would come together, they would paint their jar or their pumpkin 
and be able to leave with some, didn't cost them a dime. We took care of all the expense, but they were able to leave with the project so many times. They said, thank you for a night that I could spend quality time when things were slower and we actually sat down and talked. They got to talk with their friend, their, their daughter's friends and the other mothers. And so they began to build relationships there. And if a student didn't have a mother, we let them choose another adult female in their life that they could bring in uh, to do that. We also did our fall and spring father-son nights. We built birdhouses and our birdhouses were donated to us by Lowe's and Home Depot. And so you may have that opportunity. They used to, Lowe's used to have their build and grow program. It's kind of where the idea came from. So we built birdhouses. We had Taekwondo, our local Taekwondo chapter come in, do a self-defense class. Kids come in and, and fathers too, and were able to break a board and take that board home with them that they broke it. Um, what became our biggest two nights ended up being our archery night and our cornhole tournament. So those ended up being our, our main two. So in the fall, we typically did our cornhole tournament and it was a father-son duo versus other fa father-sons or an adult male in their life. And we would have a winner at the end and we would give them medallions, but we had food on those nights. And then in the spring, we had our archery tournament. We had, um, we had fathers that had never shot in a bow before. We had students who had never shot a bow before, uh, me included. And some of our students went on to join our archery team after this because they found out, I like this. And it was something that they enjoyed. Um, so I love that David put on here, they call their March Dadness. That's awesome. Uh, great name there. Um, but, you know, just that act activities that they can come together. No, you know, again, no phone. We didn't say no phones, but so often they were so busy, they didn't get on their technology. They had conversations with their moms, conversations with their dads, conversation with an aunt, older sister, whoever it was, and bonded even more and had some quality time. I love March Dadness. May have to steal that one. We also had activities with our community, breakfast with the principal. These were monthly uh, sessions to where we would bring in a diverse group of parents. And I had my family resource uh, coordinator work with our families and we wanted families that sometimes or often didn't feel included. They, they, don't, they didn't always get called and asked to be at the table to discuss things. So we wanted a diverse group and we would bring them in, we would have breakfast with them. And then we would just talk about the things that we have going at our school, some of the great things we have happen at our school. And then we would ask them, what are we doing well? Where do we need to improve? Um, a lot of times they focused more on what we were doing well, which is not what I anticipated. I expected what we weren't doing well, where we needed to improve, but they bragged on us so much, but then they gave us some good feedback where we areas that we could grow in. So we enjoyed our, our breakfast with the principal. We also have activities with the community. We have our school safety meetings with emergency management staff. And these were held at our schools. So at each school, we would have our first responders come. We would have the Kentucky Center for Safe School. Our SROs were there, our 911 office. We would have people from our central office come and talk about school safety regarding our school specifically. What would we do in a situation if a school shooting happened? What would we do if a fire happened? What would we do in whatever the emergency situation was? What are our plans? And we had the right people at the table if we had an idea to answer our question, would this work? Also a great time for us to go over our emergency management plan with them and we walked around our schools looking for areas that we needed improvement. So another great day for us with our community. And then the last activity with the community that I have, this was something that we started right before COVID. And I hated that COVID happened at, when we were doing this because it really slowed down the prog progress that we were making. So what we did with the Difference Maker cards is I thought so many times 
we are asking so much of our community to give us. I wanted an opportunity for us to give back to our community. So these difference maker cards, our focus in our, in our district was about soft skills and being a just a good person and the, and the soft skills that come along with doing that. And so I challenged our students to take these cards. I would give them two or three at a time. And when they went out into our community, they were to look for people who gave an example of great soft skills, people who were difference makers, whether that was at a restaurant, a gas station, um, a hotel, even if it wasn't in Muhlenberg County, they went on vacation somewhere. They had these cards that they could say, hey, we're discuss discussing soft skills and you are displaying those. And I want to thank you for what you're doing in our community. And we would give these cards out. I'll give you a quick story on that. One, the first individual I was able to give these to, and as soon as I, as soon as we had this activity, this idea, I knew where my card was going to go. It was a gentleman that worked at a gas station, and every time you went, he made sure to talk to you, ask you how your day was going, and he was super polite. So I gave him his card. I said, hey, can I take a picture of you with this card? Because that was one of the rules with this card. You got a picture of them. And then we posted it on our district Facebook page. What happened was when we gave that card, we posted that picture on our district Facebook page. The comments began just rolling. Oh, I love him. He does such a great job. He is, he's always there. He's always polite. So he was now getting just great comments. And what topped it off is at the very end, his mom got on there and said, I'm so proud of my son. And that was so powerful just from us recognizing the soft skills and the customer service that he was providing. And um, we had that from some others, but our pictures had, you know, you had to take place. You had to put their picture on our Facebook page if they were willing. Some were not always willing and that was okay. The biggest thing was to give back to our community and say, thanks, this is what we're studying and we see it in you and we appreciate you. So that, that concludes the activities with staff, students, and the community. My contact information is there, but I think we have just a few minutes. Uh, Brandy, if we've got any questions or anything like that. Sure, we have five minutes left, and you're welcome to move to any of the breakout rooms 12 through 15 if anybody wants to continue a conversation with uh, Mr. Lyle. What awesome um, activities and strategies for improving school culture. I love, there's so many of them that I enjoyed hearing about. Any questions? Well, thank you so much. We, um, have learned so much from this session. I have a few things already that I would like to take back to the school that I'm working with to share with them. So thank you so much. Thank you all, appreciate y'all. Have a great rest of the day, great sessions ahead. So be sure and, and catch those. Thanks everyone. Thank y'all.